Hello everyone, welcome to today's top 5 news highlights, American Life 365, August 5, 2024. As Middle East awaits attack, Iran warns pilots to avoid airspace. Australia raises terrorism threat level. Illegal immigrants from China are scrambling to find their way to the U.S. border ahead of its closure. Cory Bush, a member of the far-left squad group in the U.S. Congress, was in a difficult election. Iran has rejected calls for restraint in its response to the killing of the Hamas leader. Iran has issued notices to pilots and aviation authorities asking them to avoid its airspace in response to threats of attacks against Israel. Iran's notification of its airspace, which occurred at 7.45 a.m. Central European time, is often used by aviation authorities to provide essential real-time information that pilots do not know in advance. This is essentially a message to commercial and civil aviation to stay away, but there is no indication of what will happen next. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken told group of seven foreign ministers on a conference call on Sunday that Tehran could attack Israel within 24 to 48 hours, according to two diplomats briefed on the call. Blinken did not say what form the attack might take. Israel is prepared to defend itself, and the United States has pledged its support. Tensions are high after Hamas top political leader Ismail Haniyeh was assassinated in Tehran last week. In 2020, Iran shot down a Ukrainian airliner within hours of the U.S. assassination of top Iranian General Major General Qasem Soleimani, killing all 176 people on board. The incident is said to have been unintentional. Australia has raised its national terror alert level to possible, indicating a greater than 50% chance of an attack within the next 12 months. Extremism among young people is on the rise with recent attacks involving teenagers as young as 14 years old. In April, a Christian leader was stabbed by a teenager during a live broadcast from a church in Sydney's western suburbs, in what authorities said was a religiously motivated terror attack. The incident sparked a riot outside the church. British police have been struggling to contain violent anti-immigration protests in major cities in recent days, which have resulted in damage to buildings and fires. The protests were sparked in part by a knife attack last week by a black teenage attacker at a dance class in the northern English town of Southport, killing three children. Three children died and ten people were injured, including eight children and two adults. The attacker was arrested at the scene and charged with multiple counts of murder and attempted murder. The incident sparked widespread condolences, with Swift expressing shock and condolences to the families affected. The attacker in the Southport stabbing incident was a 17-year-old male named Axel Muganwa Rudakabana, who was born in Cardiff, England, to Rwandan parents' people. Axel's parents, Alphonse Rudakabana and Letitia Musayer, are indeed from Rwanda. There is currently no specific information on how they came to the UK from Rwanda. They moved to the Southport area around 2013. Axel grew up in a Christian family. He was charged with three counts of murder, ten counts of attempted murder and possessing a bladed article. Australia's decision to raise the alert level marks a reversal from recent years, when authorities believed the threat from religiously motivated violent extremists had diminished with the collapse of the Islamic State Caliphate. Australia last adjusted its alert level in late 2022, when it dropped to the second lowest level. Increasing numbers of illegal immigrants from China are suddenly crossing the southern border into the United States to seek asylum in the United States. With President Trump seeking re-election and vowing to close the southern border, the prospect of the world's second largest economy has prompted many to take new risks and come to the United States, viewing it as their last chance to enter the country under Biden. Some are currently trying to cross nine border crossings by land from La Paz, Bolivia, about 7,000 miles from Tijuana. Mexico is the last stop for many people trying to enter the United States. Many Chinese illegal immigrants venture overland to reach the U.S. border from places like La Paz, Bolivia. The Ecuadorian government suspended visa-free entry for Chinese citizens on July 1st and closed the most popular ports of entry for Chinese immigrants.
China's economy has slowed and surveillance and censorship have intensified in recent years under Xi Jinping, leading many to take desperate measures to flee their homes. Tens of thousands of Chinese have tried to enter the United States through the treacherous Darien Gorge, which connects South and Central America, first heading to Mexico, often after flying to Ecuador. A 37-year-old Chinese man who sold betel nut, a mild stimulant, in southern China said in Mexico City that he left home in a hurry in June and arrived in Ecuador days before the visa-free entry policy was suspended. The man, who gave only his surname Zhou, said he hoped to reach the U.S. border by motorcycle. Tyranny is more terrifying than a tiger, he quoted Confucius to explain his rationale for taking the risk. The United States recently deported 116 illegal Chinese illegal immigrants, and Chinese officials are punishing those who try to leave. 116 illegal Chinese immigrants chartered a flight from Texas to the northeastern Chinese city of Shenyang. Previously, Chinese authorities refused to accept deported Chinese back to the country. Representative Cory Bush, Democrat Missouri, is considered a strong community activist and an outspoken progressive in the House, but she now faces a tough challenge from local prosecutors who say she is an unfocused about congresswomen who serve their constituents. Cory Bush, Democrat Missouri, is a member of the far-left squad group of progressive Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives. Initial members of the team include Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, of New York, Ilan Omar of Minnesota, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, and Tlaib, who later he joined the squad when he was elected to Congress in 2020. The race is forcing voters to consider what they want from their representatives. Bush calls himself a statesman as an alternative, portraying himself as a steady hand of federal funds to struggling cities. The far-left squad is an informal group composed of progressive Democratic members of the U.S. House of Representatives. The congressional squad was expanded to eight people in 2020. The growth of the far-left forces in the Democratic Party highlights that the Democratic Party is moving seriously to the left, and the U.S. Congress is also moving to the left. Iran has rejected attempts by the United States and Arab countries to moderate its response to the killing of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. The killing and other recent attacks have heightened tensions in the region, with Iran threatening retaliation against Israel in preparation for a potential conflict. The United States and Jordan have urged de-escalation and Iran and Israel to exercise restraint. Iran told Arab diplomats on Saturday. People familiar with the matter and interlocutors said they were not concerned about whether the response would spark war. The United States has asked European and other partner governments to send a message warning Iran not to escalate the situation, warning that any major attack would result. Response Iran's new president, Masoud Pazeshkian, will have a better chance of improving engagement with the West if he shows restraint. The United States is sending more warships and fighter jets to the Middle East to bolster Israel's defenses amid rising tensions with Iran. The move was in response to threats from Iran and its allies Hamas and Hezbollah. The Pentagon has approved the deployment of more Navy cruisers, destroyers, and F-22 fighter jets. In early May, Axios reported that Biden decided to suspend a shipment of weapons that was supposed to be shipped to Israel. Days later. U.S. Officials confirmed the shipment included 1,800-2,000 pound weapons bound for Israel. The Republican-led U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill on May 16 to force President Biden to ship weapons to Israel while urging Israel to do more to protect civilians in its war with Hamas. The Israel Security Assistance Support Act passed 224 to 187, largely along party lines. Sixteen Democrats joined a majority of Republicans in voting in favor, and three Republicans joined a majority of Democrats in opposing the measure. That's it for today's five new highlights. If you like our video, please subscribe, share and like it. Thanks.